Welcome to a high-level overview of React. When it comes to learning React, there are a few high-level points that are really helpful to know for understanding what React really is, how we could use it, and how it might be different or similar to writing vanilla JavaScript or working with other libraries and frameworks. The first thing to mention is that React is a user interface library. That means that we use it for creating user interfaces, websites, applications, anything that the user is going to see in the browser or in other places that React could go. That is what it is primarily used to help with. Also, React has a component architecture. A component is a small piece of code that fills a certain part of the user interface that you're building with React. Also, data flow in React. React has a one-way data flow, which is becoming the standard today in JavaScript applications, but it was one of the first to introduce it. This is very different from two-way binding, which you may be familiar with in JavaScript. Finally, we have component state in native React. What that means is that we can manage state data or changes that are happening in our application, but they are controlled at a component level. So a single part of the user interface would have state that could be shared with others. And we'll talk about how this connects with point three of the data flow flowing down in React. So let's take a few moments to drill into each one of these in a little bit more depth, starting with the user interface library. Now, React is an agnostic user interface library. And what I mean by agnostic is that it doesn't care where your user interface will ultimately display. We could see here an example of React in combination with React DOM, a separate library that will have React code display in a browser. So we have a function here, our component name app, and we're importing a header, content, and footer component as well. These are also functions in other files. And at the bottom, we could see that React passes this component that React makes into React DOM to render it to the page. And we see good old fashioned DOM selection here, document get helmet by D root. So this will look for anything in the DOM page where this is loaded and find an ID of root and load this component. Now, this may make sense if you're used to working with JavaScript in the browser. However, the React library doesn't actually care that you're using it in the browser. And we can see with this example here that we're integrating React with React 360 or their VR or 360 environment companion library. So React on its own doesn't care where you send your final components, and it always needs to be used in conjunction with a second library like React 360, React DOM, React Server. There are a number of them. We'll be focusing specifically on React DOM because we're coding React for the browser. But I want to point out here that React is agnostic. It could work in a lot of different environments, and we just have to modify it or pass it into the companion library that makes the most sense for where we want to display our user interface. Now, I want to make a point even further about this, especially in the context of working on the web, that when we create a React element or a piece of our user interface, that is not actually a DOM element. So if we were to create a paragraph um, element here and put in the word paragraph, this is React code we will learn and we log this out, we would actually find that we're getting a React element here that is a plain JavaScript object with a bunch of different properties and methods set and available, but it is not a DOM element. So React does not become DOM until it's passed through React DOM. Now, for almost all intents and purposes, this won't really matter. But if you are used to working with DOM elements, you have to switch over to remembering that in React, an element is just a native JavaScript object, and eventually it will become a DOM, but you can't always do everything with those objects that you can with DOM elements, and you could do a lot with React elements that you can't do with DOM elements. So, just want to draw that point in. So to move on from the agnostic part, I want to point out again that React is a user interface library. What does that mean? It's going to be used to create interfaces, whether they're charts or bars or search fields or entire websites. Whatever you're building with React, commonly it could be an entire user interface, so an entire website, all of its different components and pieces or an entire application, all of its different markup and everything like that. Or it could be a little widget or a part of a site, like a search part that you're only using for one little part and you're just creating the interfaces with that. Now, ultimately, it's going to kind of look and function like HTML and CSS and everything as you would expect it to in JavaScript on the front end, but we're going to be specifically using React for this. So it's not as much for the data structure, although we will see that there are ways to work with that in component state and props. However, 
React is a user interface library. What is it used for? Building different interfaces, parts of websites, parts of applications, anything that you might see. And finally, React is a library. This is in comparison with a framework. A framework often has a bunch of helper functions and a lot of structure over how everything has to be organized. React comes with a handful of functions that we could use, and it comes with some suggestions on how to organize things like com nested components and things like that. But it's definitely not as robust and big as something like Angular, and you'll find in a lot of cases that you actually need to use React in combination with a bunch of other libraries. We already learned about React DOM. Just to use React on the web, we have to use it with a companion library. So React is pretty lightweight and just has functions for creating agnostic user interfaces. All right, so next up, component architecture. Here we see an app.js file. This is commonly where you'll kick off an app. We import React and React DOM a header content footer. This is a very typical what a high level your main component would look like. And then nested within our main div with a class name of app, we have a header content and a footer. We can see at the bottom that we render this all to the page wherever root is, and this is all pretty common conventions. Now you don't need to understand all this code at the moment, but what I want to point out is, is that if we drill into one of these other components, like header for example, we would find that it also imports React and it might import some other things like an ad component or a logo, and then it would be very similar to app. It would export a function of header. And in React, we could use functions to create components. We'll learn you could also use classes, but functions are by far more popular. We'll also see that rather than having to call header and app as you would normally call a function, we could use the component format and call them more like HTML. So in the React DOM render, you could see that app is called more like a component, a piece of an HTML than it is a function, but you could also call it as a function that will work too because that is all that we have here. We could also begin to see how we compose React applications and sites where we break up different parts of it into smaller components. And as you build more of these, you'll find that you could reuse them across things if we keep them in this light modular small format. All right, so let's imagine that we had an application with an app component or a function called app, and then we had a header content and footer component that were all functions as well with similar names. And then within those, within header, we had some more, within footer, we had some more and so on and so on. You could see here the naming conventions, you could see some of the organization of how this might be done, and this is very common in a React app to have one main component and then the rest of your app nested along the way. Now you may be asking, what do we do about conditional stuff or if I need to go here and load that instead? And we'll get into all those, but I wanna start with this high level simple uh, thing to point out that we have these component trees. Now, through those component trees, data flows down one way, and that is really important to emphasize and can be something that's maybe not tricky to grasp at first, but can require some different patterns of coding that you might not be used to. Once you get the hang of it, it's a really simple, really robust, and powerful way to reduce breakpoints in your application and with your data and this is very much becoming the standard with other libraries as well, as well as just building with vanilla JavaScript, a cool approach to take with data architecture. So what does this mean data flows down one way through a React app? Let's come back to this component tree here where we have our app and all of these other components and imagine that we needed to get some data into our application. It doesn't matter, it could be users, it could be content, it could be site info, whatever it is, we go off and we make an API call and we get that data. Now we could pass this data down to the elements below it, and then they in turn can pass it to the elements below them. And this is how at the most basic level, data flows through a React app. Now this may seem pretty simple and that's good. It starts off as a pretty simple concept. Now from here, we could also control what direction data flows and what gets it. So maybe the footer doesn't need this data in order to function. So we only pass these down to content and header and then they pass it down. And how do we pass it? These are all functions. So we pass it as parameters or props we'll learn about um, coming up, but it's all pretty simple JavaScript when you look at it under the hood. So data is flowing down from one component to another. This should make sense. Now what happens when one piece of the component hierarchy here needs to update data? Like let's say that you click on something in the main nav or there's a search component or something and you have to go off and fetch new data. Now in the React architecture, we will learn about how main nav can actually trigger app to go back and go fetch new data and then automatically pass it back down. 
This means that we don't have to have two-way data binding where header, content, site info, and app would all have to be tied to main nav, and maybe other ones would have to have the ability to update it. Simply, we can call a function from app in any of its children components to trigger app to update. Now, although this may look like we have a global state, this is not exactly true in React. React has what's called a component level state, and then this state or updated data is passed down. So in the last example, we saw app going and getting data, so it looked like we had global state available everywhere. But in this example, header is going to go ahead and get some data, and it's only going to pass it down to these two below it. It actually can't with the normal React flow of data, although we will learn about other methods of interacting with data that will allow sibling or parent-child components to talk to each other in different ways, but in the most basic fundamental way in React, header can actually pass this state data into content or footer because they're not nested within it. That state and that data only belongs to header and any of its children that it passes data down into. Now, depending on your experience with state management, this may start to get a little complicated, but that's all we really need to mention now in order for us to really start digging into the code and learning how all of this works. So again, at a high level, React is a user interface library. It has a component architecture where different functions control different parts of that user interface. Data is only going to flow one way, and that's down from a component into its children. And every component in React has the ability to manage its own state and pass it down to its children. So this is a high-level overview of React. Now let's jump into actually learning some React in the code.